What's poppin'? Hey! How's it going? What are you up to? I'm chilling. Chilling, yeah. It's all Saturday. I'm about to do a update of PGE Tinker. I'm gonna uh, show the staging environment um, and uh, test the, re the most recent changes that I've made. And I'm recording it because, yay, recording. Uh, recording with audio? Yes. Okay, just making sure. I was actually so just about, I was actually just yeah. about to make the official disclaimer. Uh, mm -hmm. This call may be call may be recorded for quality assurances and you know yeah. social media. Um, remaining on the call um, and speaking signify uh, permission. So if you don't want to be heard, so if, so if someone joins, you have to immediately tell them that. I would record that and just play it back. Well, the, like, yeah, <laughs> well the, the good thing about this whole situation is I have I'm I'm recording it. It's not a live stream, you know. And yeah, I just got it. Just just ask them, and in the worst case, you just cut it out. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's really the worst that can happen. So, yeah, it's, um, nice. it's fine that you don't have a mic. Um, make it a soundboard clip. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. All right, so. I'm going to go ahead and get started, and if we want to chit-chat while we're doing that, that's just fine, but da 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 da, -da. Yeah. So your screen share, uh, do it at the I actually might have a couple of questions about PG Thinker, actually, because I, uh, I tried, I think, a couple of PG Thinker apps, and I was just curious about the feasibility of certain things. All right, I need to turn my volume up. Say that again. Hello. Well, this is great. <laughs> wow, everything just crashed on me. That was just lovely. Yep. Happens. Uh, yeah, no, I kind of just had a couple of questions about PG Thinker because um, I did use a couple of um, um, things that people have already made, like uh, Diego's uh, little animation thing. Oh yeah. Okay. And, uh, and I did have a couple of questions about like feasibility in terms of doing certain things because I. I haven't been following the project as closely as I realistically should. Okay, so um, what, what do you mean? What do you mean by visibility? Okay, uh, I didn't say that word. I think. Oh, I I, I could have sworn I heard. Okay, never mind. Ignore it. Yeah, if, I mean, just yeah. just chalk it up to Moros being an idiot. It's fine. Um, feasibility, feasibility is in like the ability to. Do certain things with PG Thinker. Okay. Um, yeah. It... So uh, I, I was, uh, just, mostly curious because I tried them. Um, um, I believe was oh god, uh, Diego's uh, Diego's too, like the little animation thing. With the okay. Segment. And what happened was uh, after I kind of like I, I remember like I did um, I I screwed around a bit with Pivo Animator because you guys mentioned it, and then I also did an animation with that one. And what I noticed was that. You know, it, it makes sense to me, but like once you full screen it, it loses all the information, right? Yeah. Um, it's rerunning the app. Yeah, it starts the app again, and you lose all of the state. It's like starting. It's like hitting the the start button from scratch. Yeah. That leads to my question. That's like, does the PG Thinker let you like just store anything between runs? As in, like, would Diego have been able to just like store like a small amount of information just to like keep the state somewhat? So that's tricky. Be that that's tricky because we're living in the world of the web, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so like, it, if you understand anything, I'm just gonna explain this for future viewers who might have the same question. Don't maybe don't get it the way I'm sure you do. Um, on the web, it's very much a read-only sort of file system overlay that we're dealing with when we're dealing with programs that run. Um, we don't have a simple way of making data persist between runs um, in the context of a program that's transpiled from C++ into WebAssembly like the PGE Tinker executables are. Because of that, that there, there's no persistent storage. Like you get what you get at the start of runtime and anything that you make during the time Unless the programmer has gotten, you know, rather crafty and set up their own storage medium, that you get what you get, 
and unfortunately there's not much I can do about that. And if I did do something about it, it would be insanely insecure and hackable. Like it, one of those things, like it just would be abused to high heaven and I would have to take it away. So I'm just not even going to bother. <laughs> Yeah, I completely understand. I was mostly curious just because, yeah, I kind of ran into that because I was trying to, uh, like, record the GIF. And uh, I just decided to, oh, yeah, I'm just going to full screen this. And I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> it is lost this, everything. Oh, is this, I was like, oh, is this, is this on Diego's or is this on Moro's or is this just, a, a like, a limitation of the, the system? And I kind of imagined it was a limitation, you know, cause specifically because of the things I already knew. But I figured that you were the web dev, I should just ask you about it. In terms of uh, technical limitations, yeah, that's that's definitely one of the technical limitations that come into. Um, it's just sort of like the nature of the beast when it comes to it. Yeah. All right. It was more of a question of the application not fitting the uh, like PGE Tinker is definitely great for a lot of things, and that was just happens to be one of the use cases that it's not so great. At. <laughs> oh yeah, per persisting data would definitely not be. It wouldn't be easy to do. It would be easier in a situation like if you were building the app out yourself, right? Like if you were yeah. like making the app locally and compiling it with the description and you had your own mechanisms for, say, consuming a REST API and you had all the control from A to B to C to D, then it's definitely possible. Yep. The struggle that I have is I've got to make sure that this runs in a... Let's just say it's an environment that I cannot guarantee the safety of the data. Yeah. And because of that, I've got to assume that everybody is a jerk. And because everybody's a jerk, we can't have nice things. <laughs> yeah, pretty much it. Yeah. All right. So, any other questions before I get going? Uh, no, I think that was, the main thing. <laughs> that was the main reason I enjoyed the chat, because I figured it was a, <laughs> something I kind of wanted through it yet, see. Sure. See how you would respond? Sure. Um, I see text talking. He's oh, no questions. Okay. So um, if if you do have any questions while I'm while I'm going at this, uh, feel free to shout them out um, or type them in the chat. I will peer over momentarily every once in a while. But let's go ahead and get started now. A lot of what we're going to do is going to be rather boring. We live in the terminal. All right. And in the terminal, I've got a custom command. This is uh. This is a command that allows me to connect two things. Um, I'm going to briefly explain what I've got going on here. First of all, I have Proxmox. That's my bare metal server. Um, anybody here familiar with Proxmox and knows anything about Proxmox? Yep, I have used it on a personal server. Okay. Um, for those who aren't aware, Proxmox is basically a hypervisor. And it allows you to run containers, it allows you to run virtual machines, and has uh, mechanisms for things like uh, high availability and uh, redundancy and you know, lots of fun stuff. Snapshots, data snapshots, like I could go on and on and on. The thing is powerful as hell. Also, the names of my servers, I've taken inspiration from the movie Tron. So if we start at the top, we got Kevin. He's the star of the show. Then we got Alan and Laura. They're the actual PGA Tinker nodes, and we'll talk about those in more detail later. Walter um, is the load balancer. Um, he handles all of the data coming in and out. And in the movie Tron, Walter's user was a character named Dumont who was responsible for the I.O. tower, so it sort of fits. Ed is the action runner. That's the guy that whenever you make a pull request to the Git repo and the runner, the action runs, uh, that's the action runner. I figured Ed was the asshole in the movie. He could do all of the bitch work. <laughs> um the pit, that's the image host. Uh, that's where I host images specifically for PGE Tinker. It's where the screenshots of your shares get uh, put to. Um, and then Bixie has provided a test environment for me to run tests on. 
um, which sadly I don't really use all that often. So, but that's okay. Um, and then we can forget about Rose. Rose is just my other like hobbyist type stuff going on there. So, and where we're going to be spending most of our time now is in Walter because we're dealing with the load balancer and stuff. And I've got a whole bunch of scripts that are set up to um, deploy things. So let's go ahead and go into scripts. And I've got two scripts. I've got stage and deploy. Um, stage. So right now, behind the scenes, and I can't show you the contents of these scripts because it contains information that I'm just not going to be showing to the world. Right now, it is um, pulling all of the new images on the staging environment and spinning up the environment there. Once those are up, it waits for it to be up, and it keeps on checking it. Are you up? Are you up? Are you up? And now we're waiting for it to come up. Once it's up, then... It updates the configuration for the load balancer, allowing the staging to actually go through to the staging environment. Where otherwise it would go to a page. In fact, maybe if I can get to it before. Yeah, see. Okay. Sorry for the flashbang. Um, so if you're seeing this page, it's because you visited staging when there's not currently anything staging. <laughs> Let's go back over here. All right, so now the staging server is running. So if I refresh this page, we're going to see the new version of PGE Tinker running. In fact, you guys can see it too if you wanted to. All right. And uh, because I start out in a browser that doesn't have any of the local storage set up, I get the fresh experience every single time. And here we got that. Got the version tag. Got all of that stuff. And now I get to see it. Click on Run, see that it runs. Now this default program has been in cache, so what's going to happen is it's just load up damn near instantly. Um, so that the question that was asked was, uh, are the new images that are generated generated by GitHub Actions? Yes. Um, also, that's done by Ed. <laughs> Ed does all of my bitch work. Now I gotta go through each of the new features one by one. So let's go ahead. All right, mobile resize issue. Okay, so now I'm gonna go and take a look at this in the mobile view. All right, so we get a fresh experience, just like before. We can see that it. Oh. Okay. I see I've got a little work to do. And I know why it's overflowing. I need to set that. I know I know what to do. And it's really a it's really not an issue because you see this screen once and it goes away. So I'll fix that some other time. Alright. So before and in fact I can demonstrate this. So we're going to go on to PGE Tinker proper. This is the wonderful part. It's because I can actually go ahead and demonstrate this stuff side by side. Okay. So if you see here, it, it's very subtle. But you can see here that it's overlapping the edge. Like it's too big. Right? That you come over here and now it's not. And what this does is if you're on mobile and you're dragging around over here, it's a complete pain in the ass and a complete mess to see how it's trying to drag around everything other than what you're trying to do. Okay. Whereas here. Now, because it's the right size, it's not trying to scroll within a scroll. All right. So I'll fix that. Now, I know that I've fixed that. I've shown it in the staging. Yeah. Yeah, you can... You can it, I don't know how to simulate the... There we go. See, now that's moved. All right. What was the next thing on the list? 
So the next thing on the list, we're going to go, we added the problems panel. So in order to see the problems panel working, we need to actually introduce some problems. Okay, we've got problems. Now we see here that we got the problems panel itself. We see that we have four. <laughs> Isn't that kind of problematic? <laughs> uh, funny, funny. Let's uh, get a warning in here as well. All right, so now we see that we've got four errors, one warning, and we've got a list of them here that we can scroll through. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and try to run it. And what should happen here is we see the compiler output, which basically is like a different version of all of the errors that we're seeing in the problems panel because it is the same compiler, right? So, kind of redundant, but at the same time, no, it's not. And I don't intend it to be. Like, if if you can't be bothered to read the problems panel, compiler output is just compiler output. I'm going to leave it as text because um, I'm going to leave it as text because it's just the compiler output. I'm not going to mess around with it. I'm not going to reformat it, not going to change it. Um, if you want nice looking, use the problems panel. <laughs> all right. So that takes care of that. Now let's go ahead and solve all of these issues. But you know what? None of what I'm about to test now has an impact. Oh, oh I'm sorry. It kind of does. Let me go through here and fix these. Now, I want you to pay attention to the problems panel as I solve these problems. It happens on the fly. Like, literally every time you fix a problem or make a problem, it shows up. Or goes away. And the same goes with the badges that show up as well. Now, if we hit run, it automatically switches over to the player. All right. And then if we hit stop, it automatically goes back over to our editor. Let's go ahead and do some console output. And we see also that the autocomplete is also working in the fake mobile that we have set up. All right. Now, if we run this. All right. So we're getting output. This is output from the compiler. All right. And then if we start outputting to the console, we get that output to the console. Now, let's say we don't want to look at that. We want to look at something else. This is because of Technic. All right, so that takes care of that. Then the other thing, and I have to demonstrate this in the, uh, in the full regular way. Okay, so on the, on the right-hand side, we have PGE Tinker proper as it currently is. And I'm just gonna show you what happens here. When, when we hover over something, it gets clipped off. Now, I don't have like a, a secondary pointer to show you, but you see how it cuts off there at the player, right? All right, so we're going to come over here and we're going to do the same thing. You see how it just shows up? So now if, an air, if, if you're hovering over something and it would clip, it, do, it doesn't clip anymore. And that was important to me. I, I noticed that when Javid was doing his live stream. And I noticed that he was struggling with it. And I was struggling with him struggling with it. <laughs> so I made, sort of made a metanotum. Like, I need to fix that. There's something wrong with that. That shouldn't happen. That should just show up. It shouldn't be clipping on anything. It should always be able to be visible. If it has space, there should be able to be seen. So far, everything has checked out 
all of the new features seem to have checked out. I'm going to go ahead and run this one more time. I'm going to go ahead and click share, see what happens when I share it. I recognize that. Let's go ahead and navigate to it. And it does that. Let's go ahead and run it. Yep. Totally as expected. Everything about this has been as expected so far, which is really good. I'm really, really glad to see that. Now, it's time to actually deploy it to make PG Tinker proper be all it can be. So let's go ahead and close down the staging section. So let's go ahead and close out the staging server. So what, now behind the scenes, it just reconfigured the Nginx uh, load balancer so that it's pointing towards the dummy site. The dummy site, which is this. And then it's closed down the Docker containers containing the environment. <clears throat> now this is going to be really anticlimactic, but this is how it's done. So If I can spell it correctly, are we ready? Three, two, one, go. Assuming I can hit enter instead of shift. Okay, so I've got some helpful messages here that tell us exactly what's going on. So right now, it's removed Alan from the load balancer. So Alan is no longer being seen from the load balancer. So now anybody accessing pgetanker.com is accessing it through LoRa. All right, so this is all happening through LoRa right now. We can keep on working. An update is happening right now, and we can just keep on going. So right now, one of the two one of the two nodes is down. I do, yes. So right now, a couple of things is happening. First, on Allen, it is pulling all of the new images, shutting it down, restarting it, and then pulling it every couple of seconds to see that it's come back online. Once it's come back online, then it'll do all of the same things that it's done for Alan, but for Laura. And it, it usually takes about like two or three minutes per instance to, for it to cycle through. Um, yeah. So the front end doesn't change anything. They, yeah, they would have to reload the page. The question was asked, what, what happens if uh, people are connected to Laura? Or, people, sorry, what happens to people who were using Allen when it was shut down? And the reality is, is when you connect to the, to connect to the app, you're downloading the front end, and then you're using it in your browser most of the time. Like the only time you're actually talking with the server itself is through the language server, which is a sustained connection, and I have to resolve that. That's another issue. We'll talk about that later. Um, but like anything else you're doing in terms of like running the compiler, running the share, anything that makes calls to the API, well, that happens on like a as needed basis. So you could be hitting Alan or you could be hitting Laura. Um, and you really wouldn't know. The load balancer takes care of that for us. Now, as far as the language server is concerned, um, that's, uh, that's another situation. Now, both Alan and Laura run their own language servers for, for the nodes that are connected to it. Um, and right now, I am in the middle of learning more about the Monaco language client. Um, because for some reason, I have it configured to restart. And for some reason, it doesn't. I don't know why. I don't understand why. So I've got to go through the process of figuring out um, like what APIs they have available 
to control that sort of stuff and to make sure that it's more robust. Now, it, here's the funny part. It is WebSockets. WebSockets is a pain, but here's the thing. If I was writing a WebSocket abstraction myself by hand, I wouldn't be running into this problem because I would have solved it already. The problem is, is I'm dealing with um, a bunch of APIs that I don't know. And because I don't know, I've got to dig through it and find where they're making the mistakes so that I can work around it. <laughs> okay, here we're done. We are done. Now if I refresh the page over here, we are done. We are up to date. And it is live. That was it.